I want to talk about password managers, why I don't use them, why I don't trust them, and why I don't think anybody else should use them or trust them either. There are two kinds, well, two major kinds of password manager. One is an online password manager. A lot of people use these. Uh, LastPass is actually one of the most popular ones, although not necessarily the only one. And I don't really think I have to explain if you have any idea about computer security. If you keep remotely in tune with the whole IT security thing, you know that there have been breaches at these password providers, these, these online password safes. Um, there's been more than one, and they've gotten quite a bit of attention. So we can pretty much just assume that an online password storage facility of any kind might not be the best idea. You know, that whole thing where you put all your passwords in this file and then it becomes a huge target for attackers. It doesn't seem like a great idea, does it? But let's talk about offline password storage. Let's talk about using an offline password storage utility. Um, basically, it's not online, so the theory is that since it's not on a big internet server somewhere full of you and thousands of other people's keys to all of their kingdom, if you use an offline password manager, you'll be a lot safer. This is not entirely false. The fact that you keep it somewhere, quote, offline, even though technically that's usually not the case, but since it's not stored in one gigantic server full of 50,000 other people to target at the same time, it's not nearly as big of a target. Unfortunately, it's still a big target, because if a bunch of people use the same one, like KeyPass or whatever, if a bunch of people use the same offline password storage facility, then guess what? Breaching that particular product or program or whatever becomes a big target. Now, because they can't just, you know, gain access to the server and suddenly have the keys to the kingdom, that doesn't mean that they can't get access to it. It's just a little bit harder. Now, that might be enough for some of you that are paranoid, for some of you that recognize, that are completely willing to walk out and say, I get that putting my passwords in a big box and then making that box accessible to four billion IP addresses on the global internet, plus, uh, it is just not a great idea. Maybe I shouldn't do that, but, you know, I think that if it's offline, quote offline, if I'm storing it somewhere that's not just like lying around on the internet somewhere, if I have it on my computer or a flash drive or a phone or whatever, hey man, that's that's totally different. That's not a problem. That's not something that, that's gonna get me in any kind of trouble. Why would I not want to do that? Because now I can generate all these crazy, complex, secure passwords. <clears throat> and yeah, you know, maybe you're right. Maybe for your personal security model, that's totally cool and that'll work great. <clears throat> Unfortunately, uh, that's not necessarily going to work great because there are still several threats. For example, the person that I was arguing with about this issue when I was saying to just memorize passwords and don't use a password manager, don't lock all your passwords up in a single point of failure, <clears throat> that person's like, what are you afraid of, like AES? You just, you don't want to trust your passwords to AES encryption, which is sort of a red herring. I mean, it, it really has nothing to do with AES encryption so much as stuffing them all in one place and hoping that nothing bad happens. But here's the thing. <clears throat> I disagree more fundamentally with some of the things that would make you use a password manager in the first place. I disagree with so-called strong passwords. If you've ever seen the XKCD comic about this, then you already know that so-called strong passwords are bad passwords. The passwords you use your little password storage tool to generate are completely non-memorizable. They are... They are long cryptic phrases using random characters. It's gonna be very difficult for you to do anything, really, with, uh, <laughs> you're not gonna be able to think about these passwords. They're just so complicated, you have no choice but to entrust them to the password manager. 
So a lot of my arguments are going to come from the simple fact that you are now reliant on the password manager because you have non-memorizable passwords. But let's say you do use a secure pass phrase, as you should, that is memorizable instead of a random character complex password that you have no hope of ever memorizing. Well, that's cool. You can memorize all this stuff. It's still a single point of failure. One. Your offline password storage facility had better be backed up and you better have a good working backup plan. It's not as simple. You're managing your own infrastructure now. So you're responsible for the security of your pile of passwords. You better have it backed up somewhere safe. You better make sure that you can restore it. Well, that's just one more thing that you need to make sure works. Of course, you should be backing up your stuff anyway. So maybe this is a non-issue for you. Maybe this is just part of your overall backup plan. But I'm an advocate for just memorizing passwords. Now, why would I be an advocate for that? Because, you know, memory. Memory is just like the worst thing ever. People forget their passwords all the time. In part, that's because some websites have some really stupid password policies that are all over the place. Password policies pretty much need to die. They need to not exist at all. There shouldn't be password requirements on websites beyond perhaps a minimum length of eight characters but they shouldn't be forcing anything down your throat. As, as I mentioned before, if you do the correct horse battery stapler thing, the XKCD thing, where you throw a few words together into a easily memorized phrase, especially if it's a phrase about the website in question, you know, something that you can remember because it's about the website and it mixes something about the website with something in your head, then you're not gonna have a problem recalling your own password, and the length will greatly outweigh any character-based complexity you can come up with. <clears throat> Just mixing four dictionary words together is enough, at least in part because now if you've got thousands upon thousands of words in the dictionary, let's say there were only a thousand, which is grossly short, but let's say there's a thousand commonly used words in the dictionary. If you put four of them together, that's a thousand to the fourth power. So, you know, you're talking about four sets of zeros. It's a lot of zeros. That's four, that's what, a trillion possible word combinations just out of a thousand words. If you repeat four times, if you put four words in a row, any words. So you've already got a very, very difficult, a very large space to attempt to brute force. It's just not gonna happen, dude. You're not gonna brute force that. But uh, anyway, what was I saying? Jesus Christ. The, the password security requirements are ridiculous because they don't take into account the way people actually work. They make it so you have to make passwords that are harder for you to memorize. Um, but that's kind of going out of scope for this. Let's keep it to password managers and storage tools, whatever, and just ignore the requirements part of it. That may be something to complain about more in another video. So if you have this offline password manager and you use this offline password manager, you had better hope that your computer is never compromised. I am very good at what I do. I am not some sort of cybersecurity expert, but I am very good at what I do. I am pretty security conscious. Um, I have, despite being so good at what I do and despite having in the past run antiviruses, I've still gotten malware on my computers. I have in the past had a keylogger. I know I knew it was a keylogger because I found the log file with everything I had typed into it. So I've had a keylogger and I only recently deleted those log files, I actually found them again. That's how I remembered it. Um, I have had actually that that and an incident where Outlook Express, I was using Outlook Express and had Symantec Antivirus Corporate Edition which I just, the email displayed. I didn't double click it. I just clicked on it to preview it. And the mere display of it um, attempted to infect my computer and was caught by Symantec and I got a warning box. This is obviously back in the XP days. So things were, well, security was a joke in the XP days and I'll just leave it at that. It took me a long time to figure out how to not get crap on my computer that could see everything I typed, that could, do all kinds of bad stuff to me. But 
it, it's almost a guarantee that at least at some point in every single person's time with computing, they will get something that they probably didn't want on one of their devices. Having said that, the steps to get access to your offline password manager are actually pretty straightforward. They get malware on your computer. Somehow, some way, they get the malware on your computer. Once it's running on your computer, it can capture all your little clicky clacks. It can intercept things from other programs. It can do a whole lot of sinister stuff. There are all kinds of ways for this to happen. And if it's there and it's capturing your keystrokes, well, you're kind of screwed. But if it is aware of your password manager, especially if you use a very popular password manager, even if it's, quote, offline, if the malware is there and it's aware of your particular product you use to safely store all your passwords, at some point you have to plug in that flash drive, you have to hook up that device, you have to unlock that database. To use it, you have to plug it up. Now, arguably, if you have a key logger on your computer, you're kind of already screwed anyway. But here's the beauty of it. They don't need to use a key logger. If your password thing is on there, all they have to do is some little DLL injection trickery or otherwise just find some way to read the memory of the other process. At one point in the past, there was an Asus driver that was used by Asus Software and unfortunately it was a signed by Microsoft driver that could read and write to any arbitrary memory location with full ring zero kernel level access. It could literally be used for a user space program to do whatever it wanted with kernel space privileges, at least in terms of reading and writing any address in RAM. If something like that was running on your computer, there's a hole right there for it to read all your passwords because your password manager that has all your passwords encrypted with AES, guess what? If a keylogger's on my damn computer and I type my password to my, I don't know, uh, let's say Walmart or something, some just online shop at eBay, Amazon. Oh, they got my Walmart, eBay, or Amazon login credentials. But if I plug in my password manager and I unlock my password manager, even if they're not key logging, they just have to be aware that the password manager is a thing and have some way, any way, to read the memory of the password manager's process. Any way at all, if they can get that file open, if that password manager is scanning that file, password managers, you know what, they store the password, AES encryption, ooh, it's super secure, that's cool, that's fine. <clears throat> um, can you use an AES encrypted password? No. No, you can't. It's not possible to use the password while it's still encrypted. Now, what does that mean? That means the password manager has to decrypt your password and store that password somewhere unencrypted in your memory to be able to hand it off to your browser or whatever it is in unencrypted form to actually make use of it. So all that encryption is useless once there's something on your computer. Now, one of the arguments that this guy had was that, you know, oh, we're not at our physical access. Well, you don't need physical access if you have programmatic access. You don't need to be able to touch the machine to be able to screw with the machine if you can get a piece of arbitrary code to run on it in any way. And you'd be surprised some of the ways that this stuff has been done. The reason, for example, that Microsoft Windows PowerShell won't let you run scripts by default is because there was a bunch of malware that it was a PowerShell payload. It was actually a PowerShell payload in the registry that would contact an internet server to download the rest of the stuff that it wanted to run. But that way the malware was never stored on the computer. It was just a PowerShell script that would download and execute arbitrary stuff. So PowerShell is set to not run any scripts by default and you have to go into the developer settings and activate running third party, whatever scripts, you know, just a bunch of stuff because of this situation, because PowerShell was used as a vector. It's a lot easier to run crap on your machine than you think. Now, 
it might be a little harder if you have something like Linux because Linux is not a very popular operating system for desktop use. It's popular for servers, including my servers. As a desktop operating system, it's a small minority. If you use Linux, it will be harder in general because your attack surface will be smaller and you won't be as valuable of a target unless you are inherently a much more valuable target. But most of these people do the shotgun approach where they target Windows first, Mac second, Linux and other machines like that last because they're not really interested in your personal password manager store for your Linux machine. They're interested in tens of thousands or more of those same stores on Windows machines. So yes, running Linux can actually be more secure just because it is less popular. But let's just get back to it with Windows. So arbitrary code execution anywhere, you're pretty much dead. And if you're just typing single passwords, they breach the thing you type. But if you have a password manager that's having to decrypt the database to read it, it's possible for anything that can get access to that process's memory to see the entire database in flight as it's decrypted. Now, obviously there are ways that they could code the password manager software such that the database is, has a certain structure and it searches by website and it does not decrypt any of the information that doesn't correspond to that website, thus at least reducing the risk if every password has a different salt. You know, there are ways that you could mitigate that and I hope that they do that. Uh, but if they don't, and I, uh, you know, if, if, if the source code's not available, then you don't know if they do. But assuming that they don't do that, the whole thing could be decrypted in flight and intercepted. So yeah, your risk surface is probably about the same between password manager and no password manager. So other than that possibility that something could spy on the decryption of the database while it's in flight, there's not really a practical difference in terms of just risk, just by having a password manager versus not, because if you've got a keylogger, it's at least gonna catch the password that gets decrypted or whatever anyway, you get the idea. Uh, even having a password manager isn't gonna make a difference. Where having a password manager does become a problem is that you're now stuck with it. Because you're using a password manager, you are encouraged to forget your passwords. The way that you memorize things is through repetition and testing your knowledge. Memorizing your passwords happens by using your passwords. You create it, you may have to initially write it down. As you use it a few times, you become used to it and you remember it. Now, a password manager can help you remember passwords that you've forgotten because you rarely use them. But this is kind of where my other suggestion came in, and this is another thing that got argued about. I actually advocate for password reuse for websites that don't matter much. What's a website that doesn't matter much? I don't really care very much about a forum I joined to leave a few posts. I don't really care very much about a commerce site where the commerce site doesn't actually store my payment methods in a way that they can be used merely by logging in. If I have to type in verification codes for credit cards or something like that, or I have to retype my payment every time, or I have to log into PayPal and authorize it through that, then breaking into the merchant's website isn't going to be a big deal. I don't care if they break into the merchant's website because guess what? They can't buy anything. Oh, they might have access to the history of things I have bought, but the chances of them being able to wreak any meaningful havoc on my life are very minimal. And if I reuse the same stupid password for things I don't care about, then I generally know what the password is if I can't figure it out because it's gonna be the reused password that I use everywhere that I don't really care very much about. Memorization means that you are your own password manager. It means that if you don't have your password manager, you still have your passwords. If for some reason you don't have your phone, you don't have the flash drive, you don't have the files, wherever, if you lose your password database, guess what? It's right here. 
I have my passwords memorized. I have access to my email account wherever I go because I know the password to it. I might have access to my email account wherever I go if I have my password manager on my phone, but then it's because I have access to my phone. If I lose my phone, now I don't have the password manager on my phone. Better hope that it's an online password manager I can log into. Oh wait, we were talking about offline password managers, won't work we? Oopsie doodle. Well, mm, I guess I'm kind of screwed, huh? Well, maybe I have a backup copy at home and I have a server I can access at home remotely somehow. Uh, I'm, but this is getting increasingly difficult for something that can be solved simply by memorizing your damn passwords. It's really not that difficult. I advocate for password reuse so that you can memorize things. For things that are more complicated, I, I would consider a couple of different options. One, make a system where you can decipher what the password probably is for a website. Make a system for dealing with changes. If you have to change the password, how will you change it? So that if you do actually forget this password or passphrase you're using, you can reconstruct it from the methodology that you've come up with to create passwords and the methodology you use to change. Because guess what? Even if you've forgotten your password, you know if you've changed it. You probably have a pretty good idea if you've changed it recently versus a long time ago. You can probably guess what it was. And in the worst case, the one thing that you should be using a unique password for, if nothing else, that you should be protecting like it is the password to your life is your email address. <clears throat> your email address is the key to most of your stuff. The truth is that it doesn't matter how safe and secure your passwords are if your email is compromised because then they can see all the emails that have ever been passed between you and the people that you log into. They can see that you have a Facebook account, an Amazon account. They can see, they know that this is the email address for it. This is the name you use on it. They can glean so much information from your email. This is sort of leaking into general security, but your email address is the keys to your kingdom because your email address can be used to reset your password for most services. With two-factor authentication, it might be a little harder, but again, it, it, two-factor authentication itself can also be used to lock you out of your own stuff. It's also possible, I know you might not want to believe it, I know you might think otherwise, but it is possible and has been done. It is possible to intercept text messages. It is possible to do a SIM card clone, especially with the help of people at the phone company that are socially engineered, to intercept your text messages so that they can get your second factor. They can basically steal your second factor. And if they can change your second factor to something else, they can effectively lock you out of your account forever. I don't like two-factor authentication either. So yeah, I'm a big contrarian when it comes to all the security crap, but here's the thing. I don't have two-factor authentication, so there's no second factor for them to intercept, and if I lose the second factor, oh well, there's not one. So the password in my head is the key to the kingdom but it's my key to the kingdom. Then it's my responsibility to make sure I only type that password in somewhere that I can be fairly, fairly certain is safe. And that's a far cry from this password manager nonsense where you trust some program on some thing. You're hoping that the program doesn't receive an update from some, you know, some malicious, like someone breaks in, there's an update, you get an updated version of the program, and it has malware. You're, you're hoping that you don't lose your database, you're hoping that you retain access to your database. You know, all of that is required for your little password manager, your offline password manager to do what you're talking about, to get into your stuff. You, you have all these points of failure. And you know what? If they manage to get the password that unlocks your password manager and they get a copy of your password manager database, that's it. All your passwords have been compromised in one step, one single step. If they, if they manage to get one password from one thing, that's one thing, that's one compromise. If they get your password manager, oh boy, it's all compromised. Now you have to change everything. I think that I've made my point. I don't use password managers and I don't use two-factor authentication. 
I should probably make a video explaining the two-factor authentication thing in a little more detail, but I think I've done a good enough job for, of that, at least as an introduction. So I'm going to leave it there. You know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Thanks for listening. And I'm going to talk to you later once this traffic goes away. Take care.